middle school and high school and then college. It's coming in nice. I love watching them grow and change. Underpants. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to A Closer Look, a show where we take a deep dive into pop culture to find hidden truths behind our favorite movies, TV shows, and video games. Today I want to talk about the Boy Meets World universe and why Girl Meets World failed to live up to the expectations set before it by the 90s sitcom Juggernaut. So let's begin at the very beginning. Boy Meets World was created by Michael Jacobs and April Kelly. It was first aired on the television network ABC on September 24th, 1993. The show gave birth to multiple young careers who during the run became household names and garnered interest and love from its growing young audience. The focus of the show was the coming of age story for the lovable main character, Corey Matthews, played by Ben Savage, and his friends, Sean Hunter and Topanga Lawrence played by Ryder Strong and Danielle Fischel. The show also featured a strong supporting cast with the legendary William Daniels who brought to life George Feeney. Will Friedel Extinguished like a flickering flame. Ow, that hot. <laughs> Corey's older brother, Eric Matthews. The show also managed to juggle and cycle through reoccurring cast members such as Blake Clark, Ethan Supley, Lee Norris, Maitland Ward, Anthony Tyler Quinn, Tina McGee, Matthew Lawrence, William Russ, Betsy Randall. I mean, the amount of talented and memorable, well-rounded characters for this sitcom show is crazy. So now that we got the formal introductions out of the way, let's get into the reasons why Boy Meets World became such a beloved TV show in the homes of American audiences everywhere. What's that? That's the sound of our beating hearts. It signifies our height. And the fact that something horrible is about to walk in that door right now. <laughs> One of the biggest reasons why Boy Meets World has had such a lasting impression on the fans of the show is the fact that it had a broad audience. Anybody could watch the show and find some entertainment from it. Boys and girls alike found the trio of Corey, Sean, and Topanga to be relatable. They dealt with real life problems and situations such as class differences, relationship struggles, and self introspection. The writers managed to create scripts that dealt with these heavy topics, but at the same time juggled a healthy dose of comedy and more importantly, life lessons without blatantly shoving it down your throat. I can't look at him like this. Corey, come on, let me go. No. Corey, let me go. Son. This is a hug, okay? This is a hug. And this is when you hug somebody, when you care about them, and then you want them to know that. The show lasted for seven seasons, and as the actors and characters grew up, so did the audience in subject matter with it. We've really um, had a strong afterlife with the show. I think the themes in the show are kind of timeless. It was going to gain in popularity, but people still seem to relate to it a lot, which is fantastic. This kind of goes hand in hand with the previous reason. Because if you're able to create a show with relatable stories for a wide audience, then it's going to be relatable for a long time. Sure, some of the fashion and hairstyles are a bit outdated, and some of the pop culture references are locked in time. That is one big freaking picture of the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> but the life lessons and situations are timeless. Even if you didn't grow up in the 90s, when it was initially aired, Anybody can pick up this show without any knowledge of it and understand the impact left by it. Boy Meets World was uh, a sitcom that was formed in 93, and it was a coming-of-age story about a young character, uh, Corey Matthews, and it was, that was me. <laughs> and uh, it was him exploring the world, and it was basically him taking on the world, and we were seeing it from the eyes of a young 13-year-old boy. You can have a great set of writers and an excellent director, but the show would be nothing without a good talented cast. Earlier I listed the main reoccurring cast and while you watch the show it's easy to see why the show's vision became a reality and a hit. Even in the early seasons with a majority of the child actors having their breakout roles and or debuts there was a sense of realism and professionalism that you don't see in many child centric shows nowadays. 
Or at least you came out of it with this water gun you wanted. Yeah, you like it? So, this is the big boy on the block, huh? Very slick. Too bad I can't go to the water war to use it. You can if you run. Isn't it my responsibility to finish painting the fence? I think your first responsibility is to stay 11 years old as long as you can. Ooh, cool. <laughs> I'd kill you, but I can't move. <laughs> Bagging groceries, chasing carts, price checks, spill on aisle seven. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. I only worked half a shift today. Oh, I don't know how he does it. Who? Dad. 12-hour days, never sits, eats his lunch standing up, never takes a break. It's like he's not human. It's like he's something. It's like he's Superman. Huh? Superman's my dad. And there you have it. A life lesson that was taught through watching the characters experience life instead of having the story teach the audience directly. In comes the successor for Boy Meets World. Girl Meets World. And uh, it's kind of hard to properly critique the show. I'm a huge fan of the original series, and I feel I may be a little biased when it comes to seeing both as separate pieces of work and avoid magnifying the flaws in Girl Meets World. But with that being said, here I go. Before I tear into the show, I want to say as a separate show compared to other shows on the same network, Girl Meets World is top tier. It rises above a list of shows on Disney Channel right now. Secondly, I wish this show was given more time to develop and find its groove. Go and rewatch the first two seasons of Boy Meets World. It has cheesier lines and stories, but around the third and fourth seasons is where it really found a rhythm and identity as to what the show wanted to be. On Girl Meets World, you could see that transition in the third and unfortunately final season. So, now for the criticism. My first gripe with the show has always been the casting choices slash director guidance. Don't get me wrong, I like Rowan Blanchard and Sabrina Carpenter. They embody the Corey Sean dynamic very well. The chemistry is very believable. Um, now, I, I don't like Peyton Meyer as Lucas. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm over it. I don't think about that day at all. that sheep so fast no one likes me or august maturo as augie when mommy read the book the first time she said if you give the mouse a cookie he'll ask for a glass of milk but then five times later she was like eat your stinking cookie mouse eat it and at first i didn't like cory fogel manis as farco minkus social awkwardness Check. You don't do anything awkward. Ha! But luckily, his character became less annoying in later seasons. These characters mainly seem forced and their personalities are not interesting or very realistic. Uh, I, I especially have a, an issue with Augie. Nearly all of his scenes are very cringeworthy and a bit unnecessary for the story. At least in Boy Meets World, they understood that Morgan wasn't an important character, and they didn't try to force her into scenes. Another issue I had was how fake at times Riley would be, and just blatantly tell the audience the moral or life lesson. Here's what I think is worth fighting for. This is my best friend. She's gonna get me into trouble, and I'm gonna get us out of it. And I did. Because here we are. Look at us, Dad. We're right here. My civil war is over, Dad. I won. 
On later seasons, you could easily tell that the writers of the show were trying to ride the nostalgic coattails of its predecessor by involving more of Sean and Eric in the show and becoming less of a focus on the young actor's story and more so of what happened to the beloved characters from Boy Meets World. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't complaining. I'm gonna be honest. As I previously stated, I love Boy Meets World and seeing those characters reach some closure is nice but honestly I feel like doing this shouldn't take the spotlight from the new generation one of the best things about Boy Meets World was that you could learn a life lesson in every episode but the script was written so well that it didn't feel like they were forcing you to learn in Girl Meets World literally every episode Riley blatantly says that the universe is teaching them something this to me is lazy writing. It's unrealistic for a child of their age to be so introspectively aware and focused on learning important life lessons. Uncle Sean? Yeah? This is like a real important moment in your life. It's hard to tell if Girl Meets World had the potential to outgrow its childish Disney clean writing or if it was doomed from the start due to the network's watchful eye and reputation. Sure. ABC was purchased towards the later years of Boy Meets World, and there are three episodes actually banned from syndication due to Disney's views on substance abuse and talk about premarital sex, but Boy Meets World still dealt with real world situations and deeper subject matter without catering to a child audience and dumbing down the script. I really wish another network would take a chance and give the show the opportunity to live up to the 90s hit show and give them the creative freedom. But since it looks like the fire has died down for a possible revival, Girl Meets World had good intentions to remain faithful to the lore of the show and had a good sized fan base, but due to the popularity of its other shows and lack of growing audience, Disney's decision to cancel the show is sad but obvious and inevitable. Rest in peace, Girl Meets World. Thank you for taking the risks and trying to be more than just a typical Disney comedy or action show and trying to actually teach kids important morals and life lessons. You will be missed. All right, thank you for watching the video, guys. Um, this, this video did take me a long time to make. Uh, I procrastinated a lot. Uh, this was the most editing I have ever done on any project I've ever worked on so this is take me a while to make so uh, if, if you guys did enjoy or if you agreed with any of the the points I made uh, feel free to leave a like or leave a comment if maybe I missed a point or uh, something wasn't thought out well enough um, I'm, I'm completely open to hearing uh, any feedback um, but yeah uh, thanks for watching guys if this gets some positive um, results uh, I'll definitely be open to making more content like this uh, so yeah thanks for watching guys it, it really means a lot and I will hopefully <laughs> see you in the next video and hopefully that's sooner rather than later all right bye guys